Hi everyone, this is Cynthia, your voice coach. As you can see today, I am not alone. <laughs> so I am with someone I respect a lot. And uh, his name, as you can see, is John Beetleston. Hi, John. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Terrific. And you probably wouldn't believe that how old John is. He looks so young. He looks today, I would say that 70. <laughs> and uh, so I'll let him share with you, if he wants, uh, how old he is. And, yes, uh, I'm 89, Cynthia, and yes. uh, I'm getting younger every day. Yay. <laughs> so uh, you, we all want, to, for guys, especially, of course, for guys, you all want to look like John uh, when you get 89. So how John and I connected was that I helped him uh, when he was 82. So that was seven years ago. And I helped John with his voice. And as you can see that his voice is still strong at the age of 89. And uh, today, so John has a lot of uh, knowledge, a lot of expertise to offer as well. So over the years that he has offered a lot of advice to me as well. So uh, we want to tap into his wealth of knowledge today. So who is John and uh, what knowledge will he provide us today? So let me give you a brief introduction of who John is. So John has been living in Singapore for the past many, many years. <laughs> and uh, so he is from the UK originally, but today since 1990, and uh, John, with his wife, Eliza Quack, built Terrific Mentors International, which is in Singapore. But uh, this uh, Terrific Mentors International has worked with clients from all over the world to offer mentoring and coaching. So to date, the company has helped more than 20,000 clients worldwide through customized programs such as Confidence Regained, which is something that we're going to talk about today. And also other programs like Sum It Up, Spill It Out, Make It Stick. And of course, the complete uh, past step system and also how to become a licensed, terrific mentor, become creative and many other programs. So thank you, John, for taking your time and sharing with us your wealth of knowledge. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And uh, so the program we are going to talk about today is confidence when gained. Uh, so this is actually a program very much linked to the pandemic because John has noticed something, which is that ever since the pandemic, there has been a loss, a massive loss of confidence. So John, what do you think that has caused such a massive loss of confidence since the pandemic? Well, I think since there is, uh, we've been losing confidence all, all along. Since uh, I remember in the World War II, which I lived through, uh, the men and the officers in, mixed in the, at the front, they mixed in the trenches in a way they'd never mixed before. And two things became obvious. One was that they were much more equal than they thought they had been. And the second was that the officers actually didn't know all that much about what they were doing. In a war, it's very difficult for officers to know that anyway. But originally, they had been the source of, of knowledge, the fount of wisdom, and so on. Suddenly, it was revealed that they weren't. And when, after the war, when, when the, people, the soldiers returned to their civilian jobs, their confidence in authority of any sort, in their bosses, uh, in their homes, in their, to their parents, their confidence was waning. But it's been waning ever since. Why did it take such a beating during the pandemic? Because all the governments, and it wasn't their fault, made mistakes. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can blame government for an awful lot of things, but frankly, nobody had been through a pandemic before. They didn't know how to deal with it. And they had to make decisions literally on the move. 
every day, every minute they were making decisions. Is it locked down? Is it, is it easing off? Are we injecting this? Are we vaccinating with that? And <clears throat> it became almost impossible to know uh, how to make the right decisions. Governments threw a dice on the table and did their best. Some came out pretty well, some came out pretty badly. Inevitably, the poorer countries came off worse. But all the way through this, people were working from home. <clears throat> In many cases, where they could, their home was their, was their base. And suddenly people discovered that working from home, they worked better. Not all the time. They missed some things. They missed the coffee chat or the, the, the talk by the, uh, by the scanner. They mix, missed those things, but they found they could do a lot more work in, in choosing their own time, whether it was during the day or during the night, whether it was when the baby was asleep or when the baby was awake, they could make their choice. And people began to see that, they, that the authority that was, that was held over them was often ritualistic, often really full of rubbish. And that's why, that's why confidence has been shot. And the managers who were, who were the victims of this, uh, this uh, affair, they began to, be, to lose their confidence altogether. And we have people coming through the door every, every week saying, I've lost my confidence, what can I do about it? And I'm very sorry for them because it's not their fault uh, and, and, and they can't be blamed for it. They can be helped out of it. Because what is confidence? Confidence is about control. It's, me, it's either real control or it's assumed control. Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> if you don't have control, you can't have confidence. So you have to yes. think you have control. Mm -hmm. That's what made the great people great in their day. That's why we don't have so many great people today mm -hmm. because they don't have that confidence and they can't display that confidence. Very difficult to display confidence if you don't feel that you're in control. And who do you have to be in control of? First of all, yourself. That's the real secret to, to confidence. So if people have lost their confidence, they can be helped to regain it. What do you do? You put in order the things that matter in their lives. How do you do that? Well, it's a, it's a trick in a way, but it's a very important trick. You try to get to the heart of the matter. We're, we're surrounded by fluff, by protocol, by forms, by guidelines, by laws, increasing laws. We're surrounded by all that. And they all deal with the periphery of life. They don't deal with the heart of life. What we have to do is we have to find what's the heart of the matter? What's the real problem about this confidence? Is it something that dates back to your childhood? when you were never praised, never rewarded, never, uh, never commended for anything? Or is it something that's re come recently? Is it something because you had two failures, three failures in a row in your job in the bank, in your job in the, in the, in the uh, distribution business or your job in the grocery store? Have you lost your confidence because of three failures? Because we all have failures. We spend a lot of our time telling people a failure is a lesson. Mm -hmm. And that helps them with their confidence. So authority's loss of confidence has reflected right the way through society. And that's why we are having such a, a difficult time at the moment. Yes. I don't think it's coming to an end, it's not. Nor, nor is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We are going to have pandemic type issues with us now for a very long time. Yes. We're going to have issues about relationships at work for a very long time. Mm -hmm. We're going to have issues about relationships altogether for a very long time. Mm -hmm. None of this is coming to an end quickly. What we have to do is we have to adapt and work with it. If you fight against it, it won't work. You have to work with it. Yes, yes. Does Thanks, that give you an idea of what we're doing? <laughs> Doing very well. So it sounds like that because of the loss of confidence people have towards the government, towards the managers, and their loss of confidence towards them make the managers 
feel less confident. It's so true. So at the heart of the matter of the loss of confidence for those people, I think you mentioned just now is not in control. So would you mind uh, exploring more on that? There are two things about control that you have to be aware of. When you have to demand control, you are not in control. It's very interesting. Look at the last president of the United States. He was forever demanding control. He was ever banging the desk and saying, I am in control. That's because he wasn't. He was forever saying, I'm fully confident. That's because he wasn't. When you have to say these things, you aren't. Control is about letting people know what matters, what really matters. Mm. Does it really matter if somebody takes a, an afternoon, a sunny afternoon off on the golf course, if his work is going well? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Does it matter if somebody isn't available when you want them urgent if something? It matters. It matters where, whether it's midnight or four in the morning, it matters. You have to learn what, what matters in control is availability, is willingness to sort, to sort things out when they go wrong mm -hmm. and is not to be the, the subject of every little whim, fancy and every little tiny problem. Little tiny problems can be solved in a little tiny way. You don't need your top people solving them. But you do need your top people understanding the strategy of the business. One of the reasons that people aren't in control is that they don't know they're going, where they're going. Now, this applies to businesses and it applies to people. And one of the fundamental things any mentor coach will do today is help people to find their purpose. You mentioned earlier, Cynthia, a program, probably the most popular program we've got, over 9,000 people have done it now. Um, and that's the PASDAQ, P-A-S-D-A-Q, Personality, Ability, Skills, Dreams, Ambitions, Qualifications. That's what it stands for. And that program has been very, very popular and is tremendously successful. And it, it's a program to help people to find their purpose. Because if you don't have your purpose and if the company doesn't have its purpose, it doesn't know what it's doing. Mm. And people say, well, our purpose is to make money. That's not a purpose. Making money is a consequence of what you do. It's not a purpose. It can never be a purpose in its own right. That's right. Obviously, you have to make enough money to survive. You have to, you have to make money to be prudent and so on. But that's not the purpose. When, when your businesses start to make money, making money the purpose, it's because they're heavily in debt and they're going the wrong way. Mm. It's what ruins businesses. I saw a business, a very, very big business, uh, totally ruined by trying to make it more profitable in a hurry. It was a, it was a gross mistake, gross mistake. Yes, and yes. Uh, it ruined the business, broke it up, destroyed yes. it completely. That's right. So I think you won't survive today if your sole purpose is to make money. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, I think also from what you're sharing, it looks like that in order to regain the confidence, one of the things is to find their purpose. So any other things they can do to regain their confidence? You regain your confidence when you stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about the other person. <clears throat> you lose your confidence when we do what we, we call it, studying your navel. You shouldn't study your navel too much. An occasional glance will do. That should tell you it's okay. After that, think about the other person. All, uh, all confidence is, is established by thinking about other people. Mm -hmm. You think about, think about Mother Teresa, a woman, a little Armenian nun who, who disobeyed her church, disobeyed her bishop, disobeyed everybody and disobeyed the authorities, was grossly disliked by the authorities in Calcutta when she originally went there. And was probably the most one of the most powerful people, most successful people on earth in my lifetime. The one where she's one of the role models for my life. 
And Mother Teresa had a wonderful confidence. I remember the media used to always ask her, how many people have you helped mother? And she would say one. And they'd say, no, no, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the thousands of people you've helped. How many people do you help? One. Uh, come on, mother, tell us the truth. How many people you help? I help the one in my arms. Wow. Yeah. Think of that for confidence. I've always said, when you can say, when you can look at the world and say, I help the one in my arms, you have almost total confidence. So thank you so much to, uh, for sharing your wisdom and your wealth of knowledge with us. And I encourage people to sign up for John's uh, daily dose of, uh, was it motivation or inspiration? So he writes articles uh, on a daily basis and sends out and shares with people. So I'll let John share more besides that uh, daily article that he writes, but also how to get in touch with him. Yes, uh, well, if you want to get in touch with me, it's very easy. You write to uh, email mentors, M-E-N-T-O-R-S, at terrificmentors, that's one word, dot com. Mentors at terrificmentors.com. <clears throat> if you want to ring up, we have a new telephone number, which, you've, uh, which is a universal number, which is 65, of course, for the Singapore code, 8023. 4208. That's 8023-4208. And you can always look at our website, which is www.terrificmentors.com. Mm. It's been a real pleasure working with you, Cynthia. I've admired you, as you know, ever since you started. You're a fantastic person. You do a fantastic job. And I refer quite a lot of people to you. Uh, who need help with their voices. We all need help with our voices and you're the person to go to. Thank you Thanks. for having me. Uh -huh. Thank you, John. So we'll also put in the contact information uh, in the comment below this video. So uh, do get in touch with John if you feel that you want to have more confidence, want to make a bigger impact in this world. Thank you, John, and we'll keep in touch. <laughs>